A um, couple things about the homework. You, Macs have trouble with it in general, I think. Definitely Safari has big problems with it. So you can't use Safari. Um, you probably have to use um, a, like maybe a Chrome browser or maybe um, Firefox maybe. I think people have had success with Firefox. Um, if you're having trouble logging in, and also sometimes a particular one will, will not work. So just try a different computer or try a different browser. Try different browsers first. You know, Chrome or um, Edge or um, Firefox and the doesn't work, then try a different computer. Um, but the ones on campus typically always work. Um, I am, because some people are having some issues, I am going to extend the homework that was due tonight. I'll have it due tomorrow night. Okay. So if his earphones are in, tell him, because he had a question about that. Did you, you got that? Okay. Good deal. So um, tomorrow night, the first homework's due, just to give people a little extra time. Do you have a question? I'm so, okay. Got it. All right. So, um, so this is what you guys should have gotten here. And um, talk about it okay. um, let's go through the first page, chapter two point two point two. Um, again, the word bank's right above it. A blank is the organization of raw data in table form using classes and frequencies. What is that? Frequency distribution. Frequency distribution, yep. It is also useful to find the percent of the total that each class is, uh, that each class group and group represents. We call this the relative frequency. relative frequency, the percent, right? What percent is in each, in, in each class? The ratio of what's in that class, the frequency of that class compared to the total. Because it shows how it's related to the total. Blank counts how many data points are in that class or a previous class. Cumulative, cumulative frequency. In other words, how many data points are there from the beginning up to that class? Blank tells us what percent of the data is in that class or a previous class. Cumulative relative frequency, good. Um, the blank is how wide the class is, class width. Um, you find that by subtracting successive upper or lower class limits. And I would take two classes that are in a row, subtract their class, their lower class limits, and you'll find it. The blank is also known as X sub N. M is the value exactly in the middle of the class. Midpoint is found by averaging, class midpoint found by averaging the upper and lower classes, class limits or boundaries. Um, blanks separate the classes. Class boundaries. <coughs> Find class boundary, average the upper class limit of one class with the lower limit of the next class. Um, and then the smallest or largest possible data values in a class are the lower and upper class limits. Yeah. Those are actual data values that the class can have. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what is problem number three. So, 143, class width. 143 minus 112, I get what? 31. That's my range. So, is that, is my range, is, is, is so my range, is it larger than 20? Yes. So, use class width. Class width of five. Everybody on board with that part? Um, give me thumbs. Like, totally got that, or mm, what, or totally not. So I engage with to give you a second to talk to your neighbors about it. Okay, I think you guys are good. Great. So class width is going to be five. Do I want to start with one twelve? No, it's unclear. I want to find the 5 below 112. What's the 5 below 112? 110. 110. So start with 110. One ten. What's the next one? Find all your lower class boundaries. 110, 115, 120, 
130. We're good there, I think. Oh, no, we're not. 135, 140, 145. Oh, look. 145? That's bigger than my max. You guys see that? So I don't need it. That's the easy way to figure out when you stop. When your next number would be bigger than your maximum. All right, so then I need to go back here and figure out what's the number that comes before 115. 114. 114. Should be just straight up. All my data is in whole numbers, so it should be a whole number. 114, so I'm going to put it right here. 114. Good. And then the next one, add 5. Add 5. Or you can just take the number before 125 if you want. That's easier. Either one's okay. 129, 134. Before 140 is 139. And I had to add 5 to get the last one. 144. Good. Why well, am I adding 5? Why well, am I not adding 10 or 6 or 7? That's my class width. Yep. My class width is 5. These are my classes. And then, you guys need to find the boundaries, right? Did I say boundaries? Yeah, I said to say boundaries. Boundaries. So, the number between 14, 114 and 115 is 114.5. It will always have one more decimal place than my limits. My limits are the same as my data in terms of decimal places. This one will always have one more decimal place. Boundaries, always. So 114, one more decimal place, 114.5. The number between 114 and 115. So that's his upper boundary. And the second class is lower boundary. And then you guys should have the next one. 119.5, same thing there. 124.5, same thing there. Is, this, is everybody on board with this part? You guys all bored? And then I get stuck. So I don't know how to find this guy up here in his last corner. But then I notice, oh look, what's the pattern with these guys? 24, 29, 24.5, 29.5, 134.5, 139.5, they're all separated by 5, the class width. So I can just take 114.5 and subtract 5 to get that one that came before it. 109.5. What's next? My frequencies. Maybe you tallied to get them, maybe you didn't, it doesn't matter. So tally could be a part of it or not, I don't, it doesn't matter, it's optional. What did you guys get for this? First one? Two. Next one? Five. Next. Four. Next. Three. Next. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Everybody all right with that? And then I think I asked for relative frequency. How many out of 20? So it'd be 2 out of 20, 10% or 0.10. 5 out of 20, 0 0.25, 0 0.2, 0 0.20, 0 0.15, 0 0.10, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Good. So please note, 0.10 is the same thing as 0.1. Do whichever one you're more comfortable with. If you want to keep them, keep the zero there, because then you have it in percents, and it helps your brain kind of wrap your, your, you know. Remember, all this class is going to be new information, new stuff. So keep it as simple as it can for you. Rely on, as much as you can on things you've learned before. If you like this better because it reminds you of 10 cents, 
So 10%, 10 cents, then totally, that's all good. Just leave it like that. No reason not to. Um, and then I think I asked for cumulative frequency, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is when you accumulate, so how many are in this class or before? Two, how many are in this, the second class or before? Seven. The next, this one? Eleven? Next? Fourteen. Next? Sixteen. Next? Eighteen. And last? Twenty. Twenty of them are in the last class or a previous class. Okay, so you guys have one to work on, um, which is um, lab problem two. This midpoint is still for this. Oh, midpoints. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Midpoints. Okay, so midpoints. So we need to take 110 and 114 and average them. 110 plus 114 divided by 2, I get 112. Yeah? And the next one, um, if I average those ones, I should get 117. And then 122. And then do you guys see the pattern? Mm -hmm. That's separated by 5 because that's my width, width my class width. 127, 132, 137, and 142. Good. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, instead of uh, starting the class, uh, lower class limit with 110, uh -huh. I started with 112 because that right. is the lowest number. Right. And you can, but it looks less clear that way because then your data is um, it's not, like here, it's easier to wrap your head around when you see class. This is really easy to wrap your head around. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 130, 134, oh, 135, because yeah, we are familiar, we're super familiar with these numbers. So we see them, our, our brain, it, it takes up less working memory in our brain. Do you, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? Because these numbers are already familiar. Um, so then when someone's looking at your data for the first time, they spend less time thinking and their brain thinking about that and more time thinking about what you want them to think about. So that's why it's, yeah, you can do that. And sometimes you need to do that. But if you can, if you're talking about fives or tens, you should really, you really want to start on a five or a ten. Because people will just, it will be easier for them to, to think about. Yeah. Good, good point. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can do that. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.